I am Michael, aka Rickshaw, and you're nerding out with Rickshaw. Today, <laughs> to me, my beef men. <laughs> to me? <laughs> Anyways, you're also nerding out with. What's up, nerds? It's Rabbit. And it is me, the producer, Toby. Well, guys, it's time to talk about X Men finally. <laughs> I've been waiting, you know, at least. It's I miss Fuzz today, but you know he wouldn't have much to say about X Men except for he'd probably be like, "Those X Men movies are God's gift to man," you know, <laughs> <laughs> just so he could, just because it pisses me off really bad. So <laughs> that's probably what he would say because those X Men movies are god awful garbage for the most part. Pretty rough. Pretty rough. But yeah, we're gonna talk about X Men today. X Men ninety seven. X Men ninety seven was super dope it was a if you don't know what that is it's a continuation of the old 90s animated series and they kind of, it was like kind of a continuation but it kind of had a reboot feel to it at the same time and i thought it was pretty dope i thought it was like the sickest shit that has been going on in the marvel you know banner for a while so what did you guys think about it I thought it was dope. It was like, um, it was like invincible mixed with the old school X-Men. You know what I mean? Like it had that updated, like kind of violent nature to it at some points, which I liked. Yeah. And then they brought in new characters, new storylines, updated it for, you know, current, you know, I don't know societal issues and whatnot. <laughs> well, <laughs> which yeah. they've already they yeah. always kind of had their like, oh yeah, like, yeah, thumb yeah. on the pulse of that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it, it makes sense. X Men is always like the thing that's super weird about this is like I realized it whenever it was happening is like there are a bunch of people that are calling X Men super woke right now, and they're Jesus. like, you know, and yeah, but it's the reason why is we haven't had good X Men shit. For a lot since the that animated since, yeah. series, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So it's like people's view that don't know any better of X Men at this point is not accurate to what they represent. You know what I mean? Well, and they were like, kids when they the... used to watch it. Like they haven't gone back and what. Re... I'm sure, like I'm sure we have rewatched X Men, the old cartoon, yeah. in the last ten years. We've rewatched some of the episodes, most of the episodes, whatever. A lot of these people that are like, these aren't my X Men. That's because you didn't watch. You haven't watched it since you were a kid. You haven't read the comics. Right. You haven't kept up with all the stories. And I, I think you're right. The movies that we did get didn't ever touch on anything. It was just like, I mean, they kind of did. Don't get me wrong. They, they did. They did little, it lightly. Yeah, but it wasn't like it didn't just hit you in the face with what the messages would have been. So. Right. Yeah. Like literally all the messages in X Men since I. Have, first picked up uh, an X-Men comic or watched the animated series it is literally just like this. These are all the people that are different and these are all the people that are treated like shit. And you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like an allegory for, you know, you know, racism and, and people that are sexist and people that are like against homosexuality, you know what I mean? And, and I guess everybody forgot that or just don't know that that are calling it woke. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? But, you know, they've been doing that with the comics for a long time, too. Like, when they when they finally made Iceman, like, come out and be gay, like, there mm -hmm. was such a stupid uproar, like, why are you making yeah. my X-Men gay? He's never been gay in the, the 70 years he's been around. And it's like, well, yeah, that's the point of the story, is he's having a coming out story, and he's trying to find himself, and, and like, he's trying to figure it out. And, and people mm -hmm. don't get it. They just don't get that kind of stuff. I mean, like, I don't know... Like, if you did read X-Men, there was, like, a bunch of people I thought were gay. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean? I mean, first of all, let's talk about how they're all standing around, like, tight as fuck <laughs> with their fucking <laughs> skin-tight suits on. And they're always high-fiving and they're always slapping each other on the ass after they do some cool X-Men shit. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like Gambit in that cut-off shirt, you know? <laughs> In, the, in yeah. the comic, he wasn't even, he was just wearing like some skin tight sh jorts in that <laughs> basketball scene. And they threw a shirt on him. 
know what I mean? <laughs> like that's funny. Oh, people know. fucking it's hated that shirt me. so much. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, have you ever seen Gambit? Like, have you ever heard him talk? And like how his whole personality, like that, I thought that match, like he's, you know, and it's the nineties. Like this is supposed to take place in the nineties yeah, yeah. when that yeah. was. He had pink. He had a pink shirt on. Like his <laughs> his his X-Men, crop tops for dudes were popular. Well, his yeah. his X Men outfit, his like battle costume, is literally a trench coat over a pink like <laughs> you know what I mean like and his fingerless yeah. gloves. You know like yeah, come on. But come see, on. Here, here's the other thing is like yeah. you know how in love with Rogue he is. So like yeah. why is it that big of a deal that he's just wearing something because he's for whatever you know whatever but well, it's the 90s and everybody wants to be mad about some shit i guess i don't know <laughs> you changed my x-men yeah, <laughs> no, yeah no, they always been a little gay a little, yeah, yeah. A little gay. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> x-men have always been the outcasts and i'm not saying that gay people are outcasts but i'm saying like yeah they've just always been the different ones the, like mm. the scene kids if you will or like the goth kids like <laughs> any like sub societal culture group. marginalized group that was the x-men that's mm. who they were and they're always getting called out for it you know by you could call them like normies i guess in the comics calling them muties and all that shit mm -hmm. like that's what they were supposed to be and, and, and that's is, what they've always been it's the government There's literally hate groups you yeah. know what yeah. i mean that like try and attack them and set them back you know they I mean? have slur words to, <laughs> yeah. to describe them <laughs> well, like yeah. that's you yeah. know they, they have like people they they deal with like like the government like trying to yeah. you know whatever with mutants and stuff so like yeah i mean it's it's trying to be too involved with things and like I, I don't know. I just I don't I don't get how people don't see like, yeah, this is what it's always been. It's just it's it's silly, right? It's silly. Yeah, it is silly. I think that uh, the funny thing that I noticed about that, I mean, you know, for the most part, everybody is loving the show, and I and I'm guessing that the people that know what X Men is has have known that it's like the original woke, you know, instead of the way that everybody uses it now. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you know all, all woke used to be is like hey you know remember that your friends like are you know minorities and they should be treated equally you know that's the way woke was originally well now, but like now woke is is like uh, you don't want to be held account you don't want to be held accountable for anything so oh if oh that means i'm woke or you're being woke towards me because you're trying to make me be accountable for something <laughs> yeah but I did think it was funny that there was way more uh, of this kind of stuff before the show came out. Like there would be YouTubers and like articles dropping, being like, "X Men is woke," right? And then it's like uh, they're coming out and saying Morph is non-binary, and it's like Morph can literally be a boy or a girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. so, he is the only person you could probably call technically. You know, like technical to its core, yeah. As not binary, yeah. like m morph, morph, and maybe mystique. Right, like they're the two that can like transform back and forth between male and female. Right, and they're not trying so, to do it with they're not legitimately. Trying to, they're, they're, <laughs> they're not trying to do it to a character that's like I don't know. Right. They're not I, changing. They're not. Yeah, they're not touching anyone where everyone would cry about it. They're 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 giving it to the character that it's like, oh yeah, that that makes sense because of their abilities mm. absolutely right yeah they're not trying to make like wolverine had they have they them pronouns <laughs> I would, I would yeah. not something yeah. like that it's like it's something that makes sense uh i mean uh, go ahead well i was gonna say one thing i, I loved <laughs> about this show though is that the first episode still felt like it was for kids and right. did y'all notice the sneaky little things where they were making it slightly more adult every episode for us? Because, you yeah, know, yeah. but the, it's not like too extreme adult. Like, it's not like we're watching one of the Deadpool movies, but they they slipped in some cuss words here and there. Uh, mm -hmm. By the end of it, there was blood. There's never been. I can't recall a time where there has actually been blood in an X-Men uh, episode. And there yeah. may have been. Well, um, what's so that? it was like even sorry, it was even like uh, the 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 episodes themselves were getting you ready right they were like warming you up for mm -hmm. that 
like you you started going into it and you're like wow this really does feel nostalgic but it's like i don't know i'm a grown-up now and then it slowly started doing more grown-up things and you followed and it, it yeah and then episode four was like the jubilee episode right and the message in that uh episode was like she you know they went into this video game and, and it was like her seeing her past memories and then she got to a point where she's like it's rad i like being here these are old memories i you know and then they they're like uh sunspot is like well you we have to get out of here you can't just be hanging around all this old stuff you have to grow and you have to move on and <laughs> you know what i mean and then it was like the next episode they're like we're gonna kill everyone <laughs> and you were like oh my god they tried to warn me <laughs> that, that was a really good warning episode like they really yeah. like that was a, a a home run of an episode to like yeah. to gradually because up until then it's been like i think wolverine sneaks in the word damn at one point and like you, mm -hmm. if you catch it you caught it and you're like huh okay but that was the turning point where they're like okay we know you love this stuff. Yeah. We're about to turn it up. It's about <laughs> yeah. to get real. And it, was, it was like, no, you're you are not safe <laughs> anywhere, and you should be prepared. I was like, oh my god, this is. I don't know because you know honestly, they. I've seen a few interviews with like uh, the creator talking about it, and he like put out a big thing about it. Uh, you know, he was saying that he helped write lots of the show and he's a, a gay black man. And he was saying that there was like, what? I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't do my homework on this, but there was a, like a shooting at a gay nightclub that he would go to and it was closed down after this shooting happened. And he was like, it changed everything. And he was also like comparing it to like where we're at as a society. It's like, we all, there was a certain point in time, like in our society where like nothing feels like it's safe anymore. And it's like, doesn't feel like it's fun in games anymore. And like, that's what they wanted to kind of translate in the show. And it worked because you're just like, Oh, now it feels like the way things are <laughs> like after episode five, you know what I mean? Before that, it was like all fun and games. <laughs> then after episode you're five, you're like, "Why am I crying, <laughs> dude?" There was a couple of episodes that got me that I was just like, "Yeah, I'm a 35 year old man watching a cartoon that I used to watch when I was a kid. It's making me upset." That was the funnest part. Uh, yeah. That was the funnest part. Every every Wednesday when the episodes was it, it was Wednesday, right? Yeah. Every yeah, yeah. every Wednesday that I could watch them or whenever I got my chance, I always had to make a bowl of cereal and just sit there and just eat cereal and, and watch some X Men. <laughs> it was the 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 highlight of my week most of the weeks because it was so good. Yeah. Now um, some of the future stories, like because they 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 did do a couple of uh, storylines from nineties uh, and stuff, but I texted you specifically and I was like, they're about to do Avengers versus X Men. And you were like, why? I was like, because yeah. the rogue thing. And I, I know that, that they they set up a lot. That The last yeah. couple of episodes set up so many cool like future story ideas and stuff. And that's one of the cool things about X-Men is that they've always like had two or three stories like lined up. It, it was never mm -hmm. like, I can't, I mean, there was always filler episodes, but usually they had a bunch of stuff that they would hint at. And then like, dude, we got to pay off to cable from like mm -hmm. one of the first 10 episodes, you know, like, yeah, I always thought it was weird that they acted oblivious to who he was in the, in the past series, you know, yeah. in the old school series. And then now they tied it. They finally tied it together. It only took 20 years, <laughs> but it was cool. Like, oh, it, by the way, <laughs> yeah, or more than 20 years. I apologize. The, okay. My one complaint <laughs> My one complaint, the retcon that they did with Rogue and Magneto to be like, oh, no, 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 they had relationships before. like Right, but you couldn't set that up in the original no. series. <laughs> you know what I mean? You did it, they did it in the comic. That's, you know, it, it was one of those things where like, yeah, well, we're going to retcon this, but we did it in the comic. Yeah, you know, no, I, I, I totally understand why they did it and why they went ahead and just sort of like 
but my my little kid mind was like, but none of the old cartoons make sense. They fought so many times, and they never once like acknowledged each other <laughs> like that or anything, you know. So yeah. I was, I, I should have just just went with it. And but every time they were like talking and stuff, I'd be like, y'all weren't friends before. Y'all were fighting <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> so it just it, I don't know. It fucked me up a little. Yeah, I think that uh, so the people. Okay, so the whole series. I'm going to ask a few questions to get some talk and then we'll move on after this. But let's start with favorite moments of the whole show. Top three. I'm going to go first. (laughs) Okay. This is all spoilers too. (laughs) You know, for anyone who's (laughs) being like, Oh, don't talk about it. I haven't seen it. Mikey, hopefully you've fucking seen it. You fucking, you're a nerd. (laughs) Uh, Number one, Cyclops landing. So stupid. They, so uh, stupid. Dude, freaking cool, Sentinel <laughs> rips the top off of the Blackbird. You know, Cyclops saws it down, saws its freaking the top of its head off with his blast. And all of the X-Men catch each other. The ones that could fly catch the ones that can't fly, go to the ground. And he lands with his optic blast like he's a fucking spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, son. <laughs> Some shit they never have ever done. Uh, they haven't even used Cyclops' powers cool in any of the movies. Literally never did anything beyond just... Well, and, and there's a, there's some scenes where he's he's using it, and it pushes him back, so he has, like, strate- strategical, like, movements with it, too. Yeah. So it's really yeah. cool. They really added a little depth to that uh, optic blast. Yeah, well, even... Mm even like at the end, like one of the last or maybe the last episode, he's like trying to break up the asteroid, I think. Yeah. And he just takes off. He like takes off his whole visor and goes full like Marvel versus Capcom. Like, yeah. I was like, damn dude. Like they never did (laughs) shit in the movies to like make like there was even a scene in dark Phoenix where like they're, they're trying to highlight, highlight everyone's powers and they're literally just crossing the street like to go into this place and i was like they all look stupid they're only crossing the street and they're like trying to give us a show off of their powers all they're doing is crossing the fucking street they're not even engaging right now and it pisses me off so bad <laughs> that like you could spend millions of dollars to make these movies and not even fucking try to do cool shit yeah like what the fuck man <laughs> anyway sorry <laughs> uh second coolest was obviously uh, the Sentinel, the wild Sentinel that attacked Genosha. That whole scene was, like, traumatic and awesome. Like, just every single bit of it. Like, especially, like, it's, like, Magneto's trying to fight the the wild Sentinel with a fucking train. (laughs) Uh, Everyone's dying. Magneto ends up having a flashback to to a fucking concentration camp in the middle of the of the shit going down. He starts doing nunchucks with trains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then and then, you know, obviously Rogue, she he tries to protect Rogue. She blasts out. She's trying to go for it. And then Gambit like uses a motorcycle <laughs> to like run into Rogue to get her out of the way. Oh man. Wild shit. I'm gonna have like, to throw that, that in that whole episode. <laughs> That whole episode just went crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to add that. That way I don't have to repeat myself, because that was, that whole scene is just like, you are on the edge of your seat. Even though it's a fucking cartoon, you're like, I don't know what's yeah. going to happen. And then, you know, when it happens uh, with Gambit, you're just like, what I just watch? What I just watch? So, yeah, yeah. I'll add yeah. that to my top three. Yeah. And it's like the type of thing, too, where, like, when you watched the original animated series, episode one was morph gets killed and and it's pretty much like there to set the stakes right it's like we created this character just to die to to show you that somebody on the x-men can freaking die during this right and then they come back with a revival show and they're like we're here to show you that the main x-men could die in this show (laughs) we're like oh god like why so uh third Obviously, I mean, it's a 
It's a tie between Wolverine getting his adamantium ripped out. God damn, that was a moment. Oof. Or yeah. Magneto going to the North Pole in his Speedo <laughs> and, and EMPing the whole Earth. <laughs> like He's like, I don't care if it's cold out here. I will EMP <laughs> the Earth in these sexy Speedos. <laughs> but yeah, those oh, are wow. my top moments, you know. What do you guys think? Uh, I don't know if I have a top three exactly, but I do love that they gave Gambit a real story arc. Yes, because we haven't seen we haven't seen anything good from Gambit in any of the movies. Um, yeah. So, and he's always been one of my kind of favorite characters. Um, also, the same thing with Nightcrawler. He was more involved mm-hmm. in this one, which I don't even know was he in the original he, animated he, series. He can- Cameo. I don't even remember. He had a couple of uh, episodes, and then he had the weird thing where he talks to to Wolverine about religion. It's a really weird episode. Uh, yeah, but... and he was like that one fight scene where he was like doing the the poof and the, the sword teleporting. Yeah, and... yeah. When he had the yeah. three swords, that was fucking dope. It was a yeah. badass fight scene. Oh yeah, and then when he dra- accidentally dragged Wolverine through one of his teleportations, and it's like happens in slow motion from Wolverine's perspective, he's like, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, I have to say my favorite like scene is when Gambit piggybacks on Wolverine. Yes. <laughs> And yeah. lights up his claws. Oh yeah, and he fucking chops off that Sentinel's head. Yeah, it's so sweet. I, I, and I love that's the, the best. Thing. Literally, Master Mold stands up and goes, <laughs> "Do not underestimate us." And then he's like, <laughs> "I like that yeah. there there is some like a uh, really great progression of like the X Men have fucked with these Sentinels many many times. They know how to take them out easily now." Right. So it's not like that at the very beginning where it was a struggle to fight one. Yeah, they can take on a bunch of them because they know the weaknesses. They know what to do. Beast mm-hmm. controls one like he's a, a in a mech suit, you know? So, like, it's yeah. really cool. That, that was tight, too. That, was yeah. that you can see. Or fucking uh, Cyclops was like, give him the forecast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some good one-liners, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. What happens to frogs when they're hit by lightning? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they they took some jabs in the movies too. Yeah. The with with uh he they were what who's he talking to when he's like spandex? Is that what you're wearing? And he's like, what? Did you want black leather? Which is a really oh, yeah. funny callback the, to the They did the reverse. Yeah. yeah. Loved he, it. He's talking to cable. Oh cable, that's right. But yeah. Those movies though. Who Dude, who knows what was going on? I think I can't really pick a, th- a three. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take away that that one that I was gonna use from you. I'm so excited about all the setup stuff. Mm-hmm. I, th- so I was bummed out about Gambit. I was so bummed out. I was like, oh, that fucking mm-hmm. sucks because I didn't know I didn't know what they were gonna do. Especially since Storm had lost her powers, I was like, oh no, what they're. I felt like what they were doing is kind of pushing out some of the old X-Men to move in some new characters, you know, get some new IPs in there and, and new toys to sell. Yeah, but how are they going to do Gambit like that? They haven't even given him... <laughs> <laughs> but but when Apocalypse <laughs> s- uh, says something about uh, death at the end... Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Up, I forgot. Him. I totally forgot Apocalypse showed up at the very end. So he sets up that, that Gambit's going to be death, which is so fucking cool, because he's one of the horsemen later. Um... Mm-hmm. They set up the Avengers versus X Men, which is a more modern uh, story, which is going to be so good when they finally get to it. They they just set up so many cool things. Okay, I, I one of my top favorite moments was when Magneto's uh, in court and like he takes the the podium and everything up into like the oh sky. yeah, it's such a good speech. Like it's yeah, it's so good. It's yeah, the, the speeches that Magneto gives. In, in the dialogue in general, like he is the goat of the whole season. Like hit like Magneto and Rogue pretty much stole the show story wise yeah. from like everyone. You know what I mean? Like you felt the most because of them. You know what I mean? You know And especially like mm-hmm. his, especially his dialogue though. He would be like, you know, don't make me disappoint you. You know, <laughs> and you're just like fucking damn, gaslighter. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Son of a bitch. 
or even Gambit, what he's talking, they're doing that like three way, like, uh, talking shit to each other because Rogue, it's like Rogue, Gambit, and Magneto all go together to Genosha, right? And he says something to Magneto about, uh, orders. And he's like, I'm the one that makes the orders. <laughs> and you're like, oh, God, Magneto always knows what to say to everyone, <laughs> dude. <laughs> but wh- what were you going to say? I, f- I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, awesome. I don't know. It's going to be uh, going to be good. Hopefully uh, the next season's good. I know that everyone is like rallying behind Bo DeMeo to be bought to be be brought back into the project because the first season was so dope but who knows and hopefully you know uh apparently this thing the popularity of the show has got this the wheels turning for a possible new x-men movie and apparently it's gonna be like the x-men like all of or the same cast from the x-men movies but they're gonna do them properly as characters uh, and then maybe go into Secret Wars, and some people are going to be guest starring. There's a rumor that for Secret Wars, uh, I think it was Robert Downey Jr. was was like, if he 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 was like, if okay, y'all do Secret Wars, I I will come back if I could share the screen with Tobey Maguire Spider Man and Hugh Jackman Wolverine. I'll come back for that. Hmm. And <laughs> apparently, behind the scenes, there are rumors that for Secret Wars, those characters will end up being like the main roles of the movie. Take my goddamn so, money. Take my goddamn money. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, <laughs> apparently, Marvel right now is like, man, we've been messing up, trying to, you know, give you characters that you're not that into. And now there's like rumors of a Chris Evans return and it's like a it's going to be like a series about how he returned the Infinity Stones. And that's a rumor in the bag. There's like a there's a there's a rumor about a World War Hulk storyline that might be in the next Avengers movie. So the the problem the problem with the MCU is they went ultimate Marvel Universe like Mm. where everyone can die. You know, and or everyone can get old, or stuff can happen to them, and there's serious consequences. Mm. Uh, you know, besides the snap, the snap was undone completely. But like, that's kind of what was the problem with the Ultimate Universe is they killed off all your favorite characters. Now we we're in the real world with the MCU. These actors are going to get older, and they're going to want more money, and it's going to be not possible. So I I get why they would want to kill off Tony Stark, get rid of of Captain America. You know. They they want to get rid of these characters and move new characters in because if this MCU is going to continue as it is and not get rebooted or anything, then sure, move on to the new characters. But that's kind of what they did in the Ultimate Universe, and look where the Ultimate Universe is now. It's It's been disassembled, and characters are in the main continuity of the 616 right now, right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's something that they can't... I don't know. It's a tricky thing because... Live action, uh, you 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 have to do that because Robert Downey Jr. is not gonna stay. He he can't play Iron Man forever. Like he's gonna yeah, get too right, old. I, I think that what is initially gonna happen is like instead of them trying to push new characters on us that we don't care about, they're going to remember the top selling comic books and remember the heavy hitter characters and then just reboot them at a certain point. Like after secret wars, there's rumors that all of the Avengers will be recast and then we'll also get a recast of all the X-Men and a reboot of all the X-Men. And then we finally get them to all play together in the same sandbox, but it will be a fresh cast. So, and that's what they're going to have to do. And I, and I like that. But there's going to be so many people that are like, but I want to see this actor play this character instead of like <laughs> letting the role get tossed around, you know? So right. it's it's just going to be that. We're going to have to deal with that that's, forever now. It's true. 
but we're going to have to go, you know, we're going to have to teach that mainstream audience that comic books are wacky and weird and people, different artists draw them differently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and different, different actors will play them differently. Yeah. And different universes, you know, will happen in, th- in all these scenarios. So. I think that's one thing that they could do to save the current MCU is start saying, oh, yeah. This is and, and this would confuse the the casual viewer. Now, comic book people that that have read these forever, they'll be like, "Ah, I'm good with this." And especially since they've been explaining, like, "Hey, there's timelines and stuff." If you were like, "Okay, this is an MCU six one six. This is MCU seven twelve, or you know, whatever number they want to say," that way they can be like, "This story fits with these movies." We've because we've already got whatever. What universe are they saying the MCU is? I know that I've heard... 616. Yeah, so it's the MCU 616. They, they called it 616, and you know what the funny thing about that is? Uh, the chick, not it's like non Vellani or whatever, that she plays uh, Ms. Marvel. Apparently, she, it, everybody gave Kevin Feige shit because she was like, why did we call this one the 616? The 616 is the main continuity of the comic book. These are the movies. These should be named a different, yeah, you know, I think so n- too. number. And it's like... <laughs> she gets it. She gets it. I, I bet it. Kevin Feige like... was like, God damn it. <laughs> but see, you know what? In a universe where everyone doesn't know the other universes and you're just naming them, wouldn't two mm. universes be like, oh, we called ourselves a 616... You know, if they ever had to interact, they'd be like, ah, you know, one of us has to change. So. I mean, uh, you know, it would probably be like the Watcher that would name them all anyways. You right. Know yeah. yeah, yeah. Just... <laughs> but, but, but I wish that's what they would do. I wish I wish they would say, hey, those X-Men movies, they're actually MCU this universe. And that way you mm. can have them all be in the same playground, just on different sections of the playground. Like you're over here on the swings, you're over here on the slides. You have right. your own universes. And I mean that's what they've done essentially, but like, I, I wish think that... after Secret Wars it will get cleaned up a little bit. I think you know so too. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I don't think I don't think we'll get another Captain Marvel movie. You no, know what I mean, I think that's like, done. Yeah. Uh, who knows if we'll ever get a continuation to like uh, what is the one with the Celestials? Um, Eternals. 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 Uh, yeah, I couldn't watch that because they. They kind of set some shit up that was cool moving forward. They kind of set up Blade and uh, the Black Knight for coming out of that. But who knows if we'll... I mean, I know they're working on Blade, but who knows if we'll see all, any of those other characters from that movie. I, I, I want to see... Uh, we haven't gotten to see a proper... Uh, Mandarin? Is that his name? With you the mean, rings? Name. What's um, the guy with all the rings? The Ten Rings? Yeah. Iron Man's... The, no. He's in the Ten Rings, bro. No, that was the actor. Remember, he's not the... No, in Shang-Chi, they introduced the real Mandarin in that Was that, that him? Yeah, the Maybe Ten I... Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how the rings... Well, they, they were like they go gauntlets. To... <laughs> they weren't like, they weren't like the rings. The ring? They were like the right. gauntlet things. But, so even in that movie, they they pretty much tell you... When you meet the real Mandarin, he says that, and some people call me this, some people call me that, some people have called me by a fictional name, the Mandarin, or something like that. Oh, see, I didn't. And, okay, maybe that's and, why I, I didn't like connect it. If, if he, yeah, if he and, like played it off instead of being like, "Oh, I am him." He, he was saying he like explained to them that like there has been copycats of his empire. Like, and that's what he was explaining. Okay. Well. I, see, I probably just got confused with, because that, that was a really clunky story anyways, I felt. I mean, it was kind of clunky because they had to, like, make an off-screen, like, YouTube video cinematically to explain that. Oh, I do vaguely Mandarin. remember that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, would, they, would, they would, they started making, like, short, after Iron Man 3, there was a couple times where they did, like, 10 minute long short cinematic things to just kind of like clean up a couple of narrative points. You know what I mean? The, the Mandarin one, the, the one where he's in prison, the, the actor, he's in prison. 
That one was a really good short. That short was awesome because it, it. Did you watch Shang Chi? I did, but now I'm not remembering because, like I said, it was because, the gauntlet. Because remember, he's in it. Because he's in it. That same guy. Because he and the dragons. The real in it. man. The real Mandarin took that actor out of prison and was keeping him on the facility. I guess I just didn't put that together. Yeah. <laughs> and he like helps. He helps them like navigate. Yeah, through he the... helps them escape. Uh, the guy who played the fake man. I need to ben watch Kingsley. it again. It's been so long. Maybe I've just forgotten. Anyway, whatever. You know that guy, Ben Kingsley. You know Ben Kingsley. That that guy. <laughs> um. Uh. Do we want to? I know we're getting probably long on time, but do we want to play my little game real quick? Yeah, let's play it. <laughs> All right. Do we want to say like anything to play else a game? about the X-Men right now? <laughs> I love it. I want more. More of it. I don't want to wait either. I'm pissed. What was yeah. that, eight episodes? Yeah, uh, no, it was ten. Let's go back to the 90s. I want 20 fucking five episodes, motherfuckers. <laughs> Dude. Remember fucking Lost? Yeah, but we don't get to just come home every day after school and watch X-Men. Yeah. Bullshit, I would. Dude. I'd come home from work and eat a bowl of cereal and sit there and fucking watch me some X-Men. Who's your favorite X-Man? Has it got to be a man? Oh. <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, <laughs> is it Bruce Jenner? or? <laughs> <laughs> bravo, bravo. That was good. <laughs> that was good. I'm just kidding. Anyways, X-Men's dope. That's yep, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. So hopefully they do this rumored movie. That's the cast of the old X Men movies. I don't know how that. I feel about that, honestly. I think it's great I think because so they... I thought I thought that they were gonna kill them off in Deadpool three, and I thought that was perfect because you get to bring them back, you get to give them a little justice, and then you kill them off and make way for the new like reboot of actual like X Men. I mean, that's still... It just seems like a whole extra step to make a whole nother movie with old characters, old actors. I mean, that's true, but from my perspective, it was perfect casting in a lot of those characters and the most ass writing (laughs) I've ever seen. That's fair. (laughs) So it's like, if you're telling me that everyone is going to come back just like Hugh Jackman is coming back just to give us a proper goodbye to that whole franchise, then f- fucking please, please. Yeah. And then it also says... No, I, I, I have the same sentiment. I just felt like Deadpool 3 was the best vehicle for that. Right. I feel like, I still feel like we're going to get him killing a lot of... Well, I think that essentially you could do, you could still do the kill them off thing, but you just introduce the idea that the multiverse is a thing and there's all these different versions of the x-men you know what i mean and we still might see a bunch of people get killed off and him directly call them the x-men franchise (laughs) (laughs) but then we could just get just get one more ride one more ride (laughs) and then have them do actual things with their powers instead of yeah nothing at all cerebro (laughs) hey do you want to catch catch up on chat and let me uh Take a quick break, real quick. Yeah. Can, um, we get, uh, Arca- can we get Ben Foster back as Archangel? That'd be tight. <laughs> uh, is it in part three? I don't remember which one it was. It was two or three. Yeah. But I love Ben Foster as an actor, and he was not like they did not give him any justice in that movie. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. they didn't give anybody. Any I justice, mean, he but, looked cool. You know what I mean? You yeah. Know what I mean, like it's like, hey, look, he's got wings. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> he flies. And then, like, the thing is, they tried to take, you know, I'm just going to, while he's in the bathroom, actually. (laughs) They tried to take (laughs) this storyline about Apocalypse, uh, like, to where they're like, we're offering the cure. We're offering the cure for mutants. And, you know, and then, like, obviously, Rogue is like, that makes sense for for Rogue to be like, I mean, I would love to touch someone. I'm going to get a cure. (laughs) So then, and then it doesn't even, like, Apocalypse is not even involved. And then, like, Archangel, it like gets turned in that process, it gets turned into, or Angel gets turned into Archangel in that process of that story. Yeah. So it's like, you just did, you're like, hey, let's take one part of this story and then all the cool shit that happens. We don't really need to do the cool <laughs> shit. <laughs> we don't even need to skip half all that. So. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, y'all, they're crazy. You think we're going to use all that cool shit? You know? We're the writers, okay? <laughs> we don't have the budget for that. Yeah. Yeah, so that was so stupid. 
hated that mm. movie. And then, the, and then they tried to slam the Dark Phoenix in there too. Which one was that? Was three right? Where they three did had the, the storyline about? Yeah, yeah. No, where the where they tried to cure? Mutants. Yeah, yeah. With Angel uh, being cured. Three. See, they just crammed so, so much, much shit in there. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I don't even remember. <laughs> and then they were like, and they were like, hold up. Let's put the juggernaut bitch in there. <laughs> I'm the juggernaut I'm bitch. The juggernaut we bitch. got time. We got time. No, we we should probably do something else that's cooler. Oh man, we nah. got time. It's a meme. Kids are going crazy <laughs> for memes. <laughs> it's gonna be the next cool thing. Yeah. So stupid. Toby, tell them about your know. podcast. Well, uh, I've got a little retro gaming podcast called The Secret Levels Podcast. It's a retro video game review show where we go over one game per episode. We go over the history, the story, the gameplay, some fun facts, and we let you know if it's still worth playing. We actually have covered a couple of X-Men games. Uh, Uncanny X-Men for NES is garbage, but come hear us complain about it. But X-Men uh, uh, Mutant Apocalypse for Super Nintendo, ah, that was a good game. Very good game. Loved it. You guys know me. Uh... Playing in Terminator. We do have a show coming up if you're in the Fort Worth area. Um, June 15th, I believe. Um, so you can check us out there. Um, and check us out on Spotify. Or follow us on Instagram. you got a YouTube channel, too, so you can see some of the live videos. Oh, yeah. We did start a YouTube channel, so you could watch some of our live videos. Just, you know, pay no attention to... <laughs> Live vocals. That sounds so great. But whatever. Guys, I am Michael, aka Rickshaw, and you're nerding out with Rickshaw. If you like what you see here, you should obviously subscribe to the YouTube you're watching. Also, we have a Twitch, a Facebook, an Instagram, uh, an X, <laughs> uh, and then a TikTok. Do you have that clip I of do one of our clip. songs yep, there? Yep, yep, yep. Load it up. Play. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, we'll see you next week on Thursday. If you ever want to suggest some topics that, you know, you think would be fun to hear us talk about, hit us up at nerdingoutwithrickshaw at gmail.com. And we'll see you later, nerds. <laughs>